So the third match of three for Serbia takes place tomorrow. Uh, just a little bit of a flashback. So the first match ended up finishing 3-2 for Serbia against the Republic of Ireland. Very entertaining match. The second match as well against Portugal, very enter entertaining. 2-2 uh, with a bit of controversy at the end. Um, and the third match will be against Azerbaijan. So something that's very interesting that I kind of dug up. So since Serbia's uh, kind of independence, since it became Serbia, um, they played Portugal. They've never beaten Portugal. And the other three teams in the group, so Republic of Ireland, Luxembourg, and Azerbaijan, they have never lost to those teams. So they've been undefeated against um, the three teams that I mentioned, and then they've never beaten Portugal. They have tied Portugal, but they've never beat, beaten Portugal under the name of Serbia. So um, that's just a little bit of fun fact there for you. Um, I did a little bit of a... I tried to predict the lineup today. I kind of sat down and tried to work some things out. Uh, I didn't go... I, so I did my predicted uh, starting 11, and I posted that on my Twitter. Um, but I didn't go back... I didn't go with a back three. I actually went with a back four. And so I had I had Gaich and Mavdenovic on the flanks, and I had Mitrovic and Pavlovic as the, the, the center backs. I don't think that Stojkovic is going to experiment with Uroš Spajic there. Uh, Veljkovic was sent back due to injury. I don't think he is going to experiment with Spajic there. I know he's been, you know, kind of unpredictable with his lineups, but I don't think he's going to he's gonna try to do that now. So I, I picked a 4-1-3-2 formation. So um, the deep-lying midfielder, I think, is going to be Maksimovic. I don't think Maksimovic has played that well, but I think he's going to have enough faith in him to put him there. Um, I could have also used Gudet, but I decided to go with Maksimovic. Um, and the three players you know, across the midfield, I had Radonic, uh, Sergei Milinkovic, Savic, and Tadic. Tadic, obviously the captain. I thought Sergei Milinkovic, Savic was really good as the match went on against Portugal. And Radonic had two assists against Portugal. So I think it's going to be uh, imminent that he starts this match. And he's deserved it with his performance in the second half. Uh, gave uh, Joao Cancelo everything that he can ca handle. He was very good when he came on, like I said, at halftime and put in a great shift of 45 minutes. And up top, I have Mitrovic and I have actually Jovic up top. So Mitrovic, record breaker, he has, what is that, like three goals now in, in two matches um, in, in the qualifying. So I think you have to leave him there. He's, he's you know, in form. He doesn't play much from full, for Fulham, so he's, you can't really use the, you know, he's tired excuse. And I have Luka Jovic there just because... I think that he that Stojkovic will give Luka Jovic um, some playing time due to him not really playing that much for Eintracht Frankfurt where he's on loan from Real Madrid. So I have um, Luka Jovic in there with with uh, Mitrovic. So we're going to see how that works if he goes with what I predicted. So we'll see how that goes. So I think the most important thing is you need to utilize Radonic's speed. Um, and I still believe that he can cause problems for I don't care who's playing you know on his on his win for Azerbaijan I think he's so good and he's so gifted he's technically probably one of the better players on the team apart from Tadic I think maybe he's the best one you know Juric uh, has a shout and, and maybe Sergei does as well but I think he's the second best behind Tadic and he's probably the fastest player on this team now that Lazar Vangelovic isn't with the national team currently uh, the Olympiakos player so I think you need to utilize him you need to go through him as much as you can. Um, but Adonis usually doesn't play a full match anyways. He, he does a lot of running. Like I said, he's a fast player, so he, his stamina needs to get a little bit better. So he doesn't... So you utilize him while, he's while he is still on the pitch. I don't think he's going to play the entire match regardless. Um, so I still went with a, a cent uh, central defensive midfielder just because um, you need to show some respect and, uh, you know, any opponent can come out and steal a match from you. And now we've already seen that. We've, we're only like two, three matches in, and we've already seen that. Like Spain barely squeaking by Georgia in like added time. Um, Greece drawing uh, Spain. So there's been a lot of results here that are kind of um, surprising. Iceland lost to, I think it was Latvia um, yesterday or two days ago. So there's a lot, of, a lot of surprise results thus far. And this Azerbaijan side can't be underestimated. That's why I would leave... Um, a defensive midfielder back there and like you know I mean Serbia is good but who are we to say that 
you know, we can't lose um, to a team like Azerbaijan. So that's something um, that I would kind of keep in the back of my mind. Um, what I want to see is I want to see a score first for the first time in this qualifying phase. And I want us to dominate after that with ball possession, good movement, linking up with uh, the front two as I have it in this um, in my preview. And I think it will be a, I think it will be up uh, the two up top. Um, so just linking guys getting familiar with each other uh, for, for the most part. I don't think this is not going to be a cakewalk by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we have to respect our opponents. I mean, Azerbaijan only lost one nil to Portugal and it was off an own goal. And I know the stats all shift towards um, Portugal, but you know it could have been one nil, and Azerbaijan could have hit them on a counter and scored. And now you're in a one-one game, and Azerbaijan puts eleven guys behind the ball, and now you know Portugal ends up um, tied at one-one. So it's very important that you kind of keep in the back of your mind that this is a team. You know, all you need is one counter attack, and their uh, coach is uh, Dibiasi, I believe. Uh, who used to coach Albania. So he's very defensively oriented. He knows how to set up his team defensively. And the quicker that Serbia can break them down and score, that will hopefully mean more goals for us. So, you know, if you get one in the first 10 minutes, you know, you could get another, maybe two in, in the next, until the end of the first half. Um, and I think that's what you're kind of looking for here. Like I said, respect your opponents, but we also have to um, go out in this match and perform um, the way that we think that we can and that we're capable of. Um, and to kind of top it off, getting seven points out of the first three matches, I think would be very good. Uh, seven points actually would be very, yeah, would be very good for us uh, because I think when you take a look, we faced Ireland and we faced Portugal and I understand that Ireland was very shorthanded, uh, but Portugal was pretty much, actually Portugal was fairly, um, undermanned as well but they still have players who can step up so you know taking what's that four points from those two teams that we think are going to be the biggest threat and I think Portugal is is the favorite but those are the, the other two teams that we're kind of worried about um, mostly I think that would be great for us that's four points and you know um, if we can beat Azerbaijan here that's um, a total of, of seven and I think you would go away with thinking we got um, what we needed here now I think how this match kind of plays out is very important. Like I haven't been um, too high on how we've played because of the simple fact that we haven't put together a complete game thus far. And I know it's only two matches and this is a third, but if we don't put a complete performance in against Azerbaijan, I would be a little worried. Um, I get it. We all like Stojkovic and, and, you know, he seems like a fun guy and all this stuff, but um, at the end of the day, we have to be able, with the stars that we have in our team, we have to be able to put together a match where we play extraordinarily well from minute one to minute 90. Um, and if we could do that against Azerbaijan, I think we're going to be on a very good road. Like I said, I, we still haven't put together a, a full a full game because we were poor against Ireland in the first half where we created next to nothing, very fortunate to score. And then the same issues ar arose against um, Portugal where, again, we didn't play very well in the first half. I thought we were really good in the second half. The Ireland match, I thought we were okay in the second half. Um, but the Portu uh, Portugal match, we were very good in the second half. Um, if I had to predict a score for this, um, I'm going to go with 2-0. And I'll have uh, Jovic and I'll have Sergei Milinkovic Savic scoring the goals. So below, guys, let me know who you think should be in the starting 11. And let me know what score you think is going to be the outcome.